The MPP is boiling and this is the simple fact. Aside from the acrimony and wrangling in the party, many leading members believe they are being directed by spineless leaders who have lost moral control of the party. To others, the current reality of the party is a long-awaited reckoning due to what critics say is grossed over in discipline, lawlessness and plain factions that have deepened the cracks of the NPP. The party wants to break the eight, but already leading members like Alan Chairman Ting have either resigned in reality or as Boachie Jaco puts it, in their hearts. Does the current form of the NPP reflect its old self or its self-destruction in the process? Hot issues today. I sit with a man many describe as an accomplished Ghanaian, a former minister, and a globally renowned surgeon. While he has always covertly meddled in politics, his run for flag bearer and subsequent ministerial appointment made him a known political face in the governor New Patriotic Party. He will, for the next hour, tell us how the NPP got here and what he sees for the future of the party he once wanted to lead. In the last couple of years, he has been a thorn in the flesh of his own party, but to what end? Professor Kwabna Frimpon Boating is my guest today on Hot Issues. Prof, you're welcome to Hot Issues. Thank you very much for having me. With your constant criticism and attacks on the current government, are you a traitor as far as the NPP is concerned? I don't think I'm criticizing or attacking the government, no. Uh, the president said we should be citizens and not spectators. So I'm offering my views uh, to make the party stronger and Ghana a better place. Would you consider yourself a traitor of the NPP? Oh, not at all. I'm a patriot. That's what I would say. Um, oh, no, don't you, the word traitor is too far away from, should be far away from my dwelling place. What the critics will say is what we see now is your reaction to your removal from office and that you are bitter about that. Oh, no. From office as minister, you mean? Uh, no. I'm not. Uh, let me tell you, my serving in, in government was for me uh, a sacrifice. I had to sacrifice a lot to serve uh, in government, and other people may see it as a privilege or as a means of getting money, but to me, it was a big sacrifice, seven uh, in government, but it was, a, it was my pressure um, having given, being given a chance to serve this nation, and I think that I did my work very well. well what are some of the sacrifices that you've had to make in order to be in government? You know, I do other things. Um, I, I you know, run two hospitals. I have other business that, you know, family things that I had to cater for. Uh, some of these things suffered. And above all, I didn't have much time for my grandchildren. I see. And so when you look at those sacrifices and the fact that nothing really came out of your appointment, it makes you bitter, doesn't it? No, I'm not bitter. A lot came from my appointment. I'm telling you, you will not find many ministers who achieve what I, 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 I achieve within the four years that I served. I see. We'll come to that achievement. But while we are on the subject of whether or not um, your actions could constitute betrayal of your party, you said that the president has deviated from what the core of the NPP is. And uh, if, if I may quote that... Um, i just look for it briefly. You say that uh, the NPP that resonated with you during the Kufu administration is not what you see now. Well, that is true. Uh, that is true to a large extent. Uh, because you find people who have no positions, elected or appointed positions in the party or in government, and they appear to waste so much power uh, that you know, they do what they like and you know, party people government people are afraid of them and so on. That is an unhealthy development in the party and in an MPP government. Mm. So when you said that the president has changed, 
Uh, what did you mean by that? What is the Akufuado you knew then and the Akufuado we see now? Well, dynamic. When he says something, he meant it. And approachable when he still is. Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of things that he said that are not working well, you know, as far as I'm concerned. You know, let's take the fight against illegal mining, for example. And the president gave his word that he, was, he would put his president online to stop that thing. And he, we worked with him, and I was very confident that I had his uh, support. Um, but later on, I got the impression that well, maybe I was wrong. So what's the difference between the Akufuado then and now? That's, that's what I'm asking. Um, the Akufuado now, you, you know, stood by his words. Uh, he was a man of his word, but the one we see now isn't? Not exactly, because uh, there seem to be con some contradictions in some of the things that we, we, we knew, you know. But uh, probably it's because of the complexity of governance. I mean, you may say something, but then when the reality dawns on you, you may have to change your position in and, and, and certain issues. Maybe that might may account for the change that I'm seeing. Is this something you have intimated to him before? No, I'm no longer there, so how can I... I mean, while you were, yeah, um, you must have noticed that there was a change. Is this something that you have told him? No, I, I didn't notice it to that much, but uh, even when I was seven, I was truthful, I was straightforward, and I set my mind, and I, without... With, with, with the welfare of the party and, and the nation uh, on my mind. So that is why I was forthright with everything that I did. When you say you didn't notice it that much, you, you mean while you were in office? Yes, because you're so busy, you know, doing things, and uh, sometimes you don't even have time to reflect over many things. But then when you go back and you look over certain things, then you begin to, you begin to uh, connect the dots, and then it makes sense to you. But at the same time, you, you have st stated uh, more than once that your fight against G Galam Se is something you had intimated to the president before, which means that you had had time to speak with the president. Yes, I did. On, not only the president, at cabinet meetings, I met the Council of State twice uh, to tell them the challenge that we had, and also at cabinet retreat on two or three occasions, in the Brie and Akusombo uh, made a presentation to, uh, there was a meeting of the West African security agencies and I was invited to make a presentation, which I did uh, on several occasions and in several fora. I made a, a point known that things were not going well. Mm, I see. So uh, when you told the president about the likes of Sir John or Safo Mafo and their interference in the fight against um, Galamse, uh, why do you think the president didn't listen to you then? So he listened. Oh, right. He listened and promised to uh, deal with it, take action, do something about it. Yes. Did he, the action happen? Well, I didn't see them. Uh, but the, thing, the fact that things are still going on, even worse than uh, when I was there. D did the action happen? I didn't see them. You didn't see any action happen. Mm. So at that point, you must have known that the president has changed as far as you're concerned. Not changed, but because there may be setting a lot of things on his mind, on his table. Galamse was a prime campaign promise. As you said, he had put his presidency on the line. And so what else could have been top of the list? Well, as I said, I, he was very patient. He listened to me and he said, Professor, leave it to me. I will deal with it deal with those issues that are presented to him. Did you have any impression that perhaps the president was not prepared, maybe there was not the wherewithal to um, fight Galamse as it is, or as some have um, alluded to, the president could have been a beneficiary of Galamse? No, I'm not going that far to say the president was a beneficiary. But then... Um the, the, the fact of the matter is that it is still happening and, and worse than before. And, and, and uh, going on, the distortion is uh, going on and uh, increasing by the day. So 
we have a problem. Shall we talk about your recent uh, MPP, how we got here? Was it a letter? Would you consider it a letter? No, not a um, letter. Right. That was, yes. All right. So, so I'm going to quote from it. This yeah. is what you said. We are being served with a variation of family, friends, and concubines government mm -hmm. and control of the press, not through violence, but through bribery and intimidation. Now, I'm going to break it down. It's a very long quote. So let's mm -hmm. start with the first part. We're being served with a variation of family, friends, and concubines government. What did you mean by that? Could you explain that? Now, if we look at the write-up, that phrase or sentence was in inverted commas. In other words, they were not my original form, uh, words, not my original formulation. I borrowed that sentence from both the uh, NDC and the MPP because some time passed, uh, some elements in the MPP were, were accusing the Mahama and his people of uh, engaged in family and friends and congregations, government and so on. Um, so, for on many occasions, um, I get people from the MPP, some of my uh, friends, colleagues, and even from the communication uh, department, saying that, look, look at this person. They mention certain names, you know, in the party in the government. So look at them. They are buying houses, uh, burning houses, buying houses for their girlfriends, and um, buying vehicles for them, and right. so on. So I said, well, if if we are doing this. Then this is a variation of what we are accusing the NDC of. So I'm not saying, so I, I just told them that this is what is happening. If we are saying that, that people in our party, people. Uh, but, Prof, that, that, that cannot be um, a, a precise explanation of what you've said. Because for you to liken the current government to how the previous government has been described, that will only, hold on, that will only mean that you have seen the likeness of the previous government in this government. And you, the likeness that you saw is the fact that this government is also filled with family, friends, and concubines. No. See, this is what I'm saying. I mean, you have to listen to me. See, when I write something, look at it well. And let me use a Ghanaian phrase. You have to shine your eyes. Look at it well. Because if you don't look at it well, you will not see it well. You know, that's what we say in Ghana. So, the thing is that it's a quotation from both parties. And if my friends uh, in the MPP are telling me that this is what is happening with certain elements, this is what they are doing, then I say, be careful. Otherwise, what we are doing will be a variation of what we are saying. So that is, that is the explanation. I'm not saying that the government, the government is full of this. No, this is what I'm saying. That what some people are doing. So what people have told you is the fact that, or what they have complained to you about is that the government has or officials within the government are uh, perhaps buying yes. um, properties for family, friends, and concubines who are benefiting di directly from uh, the public kitty. This is what I'm saying, yes. So if we do that, there's a variation of what we, we, we were... Do you think that is the case? I have no direct proof, but if we were telling me, then I was, I, I was telling them, this is, uh, what if we are saying this is true, then it's a variation of what... Uh, criticizing others for. But again, Prof, I just want to go back to NPP, how we got here. I don't think there was a preamble before this quote to say if it is true, then we are a variation of, of the family, friends, and concubines government. I think you were very quite emphatic in your letter when you said that this government is a variation of that. No. You have to understand what I'm saying, that if some prominent people are doing that, and those, the way I got information from, I have no reason to doubt their integrity. Right. So that is why I said, if you are doing this, then this is a variation, a variation of, a variation may not be the original thing, but it's mm. similar to what we are criticizing others for. Mm. And again, it brings, it brings to the fore um, accusations we have had within your own party, uh, particularly from people or, who hold a lot of power within the party uh, who have talked about how the current administration and officials within it are siphoning uh, public funds into private coffers. Um, wh what do you think about that? 
As I said, I mean, whatever you say, we have to bring proof. This is what is happening. Oh, you, ha you, have, you must have heard Kennedy in Japan talk about that. They have heard, not only Kennedy in Japan, but several people, you know, talk about that. And some people to tell you, not openly, but they will call you or they will visit, when they visit you, they will tell you certain things. But then I have no way to, uh, to certify that what they have said was true. I see. I can also the, not disprove the, it. Does that bother you? It bothers me, of course. I mean, perceptions are not good, especially bad ones, uh, not good for the image of the party and also the image of the country. Mm, I see. Um, we'll talk about, you know, some of the things that you have also done while in office, but let's come back to how the NPP got here and, and the question you constantly um, addressed or asked in your recent uh, write-up in, in the media space. And, and so I'll throw it back to you. Yes. How do you think the NPP got here? I believe that the, the actions of people who have no appointments in government and who have no party, of party positions, but who appear to wield power, that is one thing that is disturbing us, you know, and, and because they have access to the seat of government and, you know, people, Ghanaians become afraid of anything and they, they accept everything. So and they wish so much power uh, that it's rumored that if you need an appointment, you need a job or you need something, you need to be in your good books, you know, that kind of thing. This is uh, one area that disturbs me. And, and these appointments we know come from uh, the presidency. Are we then to connect that, you know, the people who wield power within the NPP wield this power over the president? No, I would not say so. I mean, the president is the ultimate. He is the, um, the most powerful person in the, in the country, and I don't expect anybody to have more power than him. He can delegate some of his authority. So the uh, president knows what he's doing when it comes should, to appointing the people who are doing injustice to the country. I'm not saying this are... Uh, I, I'm not saying that the president has appointed them, but somehow they are seen to wield a lot of power, you know, to the extent that one of them is has been described as the prime minister of Ghana, you know, something that does not exist in our constitution or uh, in, uh, in the way we do things. I see. And, and this, pers this person you talk about, again, you mentioned him in, in your uh, recent write-up, uh, who is this person you talk about? He's the Prime Minister. As the Prime Minister, mm. the de facto Prime Minister, that is how you put it. Yes. Who is this person? He's the de facto Prime Minister. Does this person bear a name? No, I, I don't. I, of course he bears a name, but I'm not here to, to mention names. Uh, so how do we know who, who and what you talk about? You go and research and find out, because I mean, if I mention a name, somebody will tell me, proof that he's the Prime Minister. <laughs> Ah, yeah. right. So, so what, what is it that this person does or is doing that is contrary to um, the very core of the NPP? Um, uh, Kevin, if you, if you allow me, I can't go into those these days. Uh, Why you, you not? Can, you can find out for yourself and then uh, or ask around, you know, talk to people in Ghana and the parties, NTP, PNDC and government and... Maybe we'll get your own stories. Well, doesn't your refusal to talk about it make you complicit in what's going on? Complicit. If you want to take it that way, complicit. I'm not complicit in anything. I do good things, you know. I do only good things. Good things for the party, good things for Ghana. Sacrifice all my life to make sure that Ghana becomes a, a, a good place, not a better place, a good place for all of us. Let's talk about the... Um, state of affairs within the, the party. Um, is the party still with leadership? Does it have a leader? Certainly, the party has uh, leadership. Yeah, the party is a party. Otherwise, it would not, it would not be a complete party. It's got all the officers, all the leaders to make the party uh, a good party. Again, um, there is leadership, but you have complained about a number of things going on within and without the party. Um, 
if there is leadership, how would you score them as far as their performance is concerned? You know, I would expect leadership to know the things that people are saying about the party or against the party, think about them, confront them, and then try to exert or confront those who are perceived as being the destroyers of the party, and then make sure that the writings are done. But, you know, people sit back and Ghanaians don't want to confront issues, uh, and then we moan and complain and, and hope that uh, things will get better or we should, we, should, we should wait till everything collapses and then a new one comes from the ashes. I see. Again, I'll, I'll come back to the issue of um, leadership. But while you're on the subject of how um, the state of the party has declined, the quality of the party has declined, I want you to address for me, at what point did you begin to notice this? Because until recently... You were a very key member of this administration and, by extension, the party. You know, um, this was not too, quite recent. I mean, when um, a report that I made and presented to the presidency in 2021 came up, and then some people in the party decided to sue me. And the reaction and the performance of some people, some elders and so on, uh, gave me the impression that things were not right. You were unhappy about how you were treated. Sure, I was not happy about how you were treated, especially when uh, I heard on radio myself that some two uh, MPP commentators or com communicators were on a radio station in Accra uh, saying all sorts of unsavory things about me. So I asked one of my friends to talk to that person, you know, what was happening. And he said that they have instructions from the communication directorate that it should make life difficult for me, you know, insult and you know, do that kind of thing. Uh, nice. So if you have people from your own party, you know, and to be honest with you, all the criticisms, the insults about Galamsey and so on that I've, I've, been, uh, I've had, had, had come from my own party. Mm. You know, so to me, I have issues with the present configuration of the MPP. So I've alienated from them, don't feel part of it because uh, I look at some of the people and I don't see what I have in common with them. You know, this is my issue. You, you don't feel, uh, you feel alienated. You don't oh, feel a part of the party. Yes. Uh, can we conclude that in your heart of hearts, you have also resigned from the party? No, I'm not, I don't go that far. I've not resigned from the party. I want to make the party good so uh, the party can achieve its objectives now and in future. But you're no longer attracted to this party uh, because the ideologies have switched. I don't say I'm attracted. I'm still in it. But sort of, I mean, in every party, there may be factions, there may be things or so on. But if we take bears, or there are several wings in the party, but if the wings beat in unison, the, the bird can fly. I mean, a bird has two wings, one on the left side, right on the right side. But when they beat in unison, the bird can fly. And then they beat haphazardly, the bird may fall, fall down. So we need, uh, these things are there, but it should not be that uh, somebody will be targeted and attacked. And right. So, 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 Prof, if I may do a 180, um, you think that you had given a, a lot of yourself to the party and, and, and to the country. Yes. And when you finally uh, exited office, uh, the party that you love so much turned against you. And so now, you think you should be speaking. Why didn't you speak up while you were in office? What, what was the challenge then? Look, if you, had, if you know me, these things that I've written, I started um, years ago, 20, 30 years ago. Picture on change. I've been writing these things all the time. But the time you were, you were in office, while you were environment, uh, science and technology minister, 
you were not making these allegations against the NPP? I, because they were not there at the time. I mean, it, it was after the fight, you know, when I was no longer there, that, you know, the attacks became very intense. We, we didn't know a lot of the things that were going on as you're telling us now. Um, and, and you tell me, or you create the impression that the only reason you're saying it now is because the, the party that you love so much, the party that you sacrificed so much for, decided to attack you. No, the issues cropped up right. after I had left government. And the attacks were coming. So I had to respond somehow to the, explain The myself. things you talk about now, did they not exist while you were in office, while you were part of the government? Which things are you talking about? The issues of corruption, the issue of interferences in your work. Those things existed while you were in office. Oh, yes. As I, I told you that. I mean, I made several presentations to cabinet, to the Council of State on two occasions, to uh, at cabinet retreats and to National Security, the West African Security something organization. Several things. But, you know, uh, they were not public pronouncements, but these were made to specific groupings and, and hoping that this could, be, could change from within. And so, so don't say that I didn't say it. I said a lot of these things. So if nothing was done then, um, is there hope that something could be done at this point? Well, if so, well, I mean, something will be done, either now by those who should do them or by others. By all means, things, something will be done. There will be a change somehow. Either we'll bring it about ourselves or somebody will be uh, a lightning rod to bring that change that will happen. Prof, I want to talk about your Galamsea report, uh, which recently the AG responded to officially. Um, they have called it mere conjectures, unfounded, lacking evidence for which reason their recommendation to uh, the investigative body is for them to, to not prosecute the people that you accuse of interfering or actively involved in, in Galamse. Um, what do you say to that? I'm not surprised at all that the AG is saying that. Because if you had said otherwise, I'd be very surprised. Because when the report was leaked, uh, the presidency said, as we are saying, yes, a personal opinion, that kind of thing. That was in April. In May, the Attorney General said the same thing. And so, what, what are you expecting in September? Do you think you go back against their own words? No. Uh, so, I'm not surprised at all. But the thing is that the destruction of the uh, forest, pollution of the water bodies, you know, decimation of our farmlands, all these things are happening now in, uh, let me say, the destruction is on, now on steroids, you know. Mm, so uh, that is a testimony that what I'm saying is true. It may seem so. But what the AG is asking for is evidence against the particular The evidence people. is what you see around, that the rivers Th are that, that, that polluted. That is the end result. But to know that the these end, people you have mentioned the are result, involved. The end result is what you are seeing. If they are saying, I think that I gave enough. But you see, the point is that, is, that was not the essence of my report. I wrote a report. No, the, the thing was that I was, the thought that I did it from my own, uh, on my own accord, I received a letter from the chief of staff saying that the president wants you to write a report about the fight against Gilam Sebe and suggest a way forward. That was the instruction that I got. Based on that, I wrote a report. Mm. What our problems were, those who were interfering with our work, right. and then suggesting a way forward. That way forward was that the, some people close to government and in the party are involved. So if you want to stop it, then stop it from you know, around you. And, then there's, and, and, the, and that's, and that's why you named those people. That's why I named My family. question is, what exactly are the roles those people have played for which you named them? Is there evidence? It's, it's all written in the report. Okay. Did you provide this evidence to... I did. Because the AG is saying that you have failed to cooperate with your investigation. It's not true. I cooperated with the CID fully. At some point, they, I didn't hear from them, you know. They didn't ask me for any information. Well, they say that you have refused to give them evidence. Did you give them any evidence beyond the report? 
of course, I did. Okay. What was the nature of the evidence that you gave them? Do you want to say it now? Yes. I gave documentary evidence, uh, pictures, video, and several reports. And was most, a lot of them on pen drive and so on. So then the AG's point that you give the media publications is correct, instead of hard evidence. What, do, what, what does it mean by hard evidence? I mean, what, I said, somebody who has written a report, what evidence do you expect from me, apart from words, documents, videos, and things, pictures? I'm not an investigating agent. I'm, that's what my, my job. I was a chairman of a committee, and I wrote a report. So you have to go around and see whether what I'm saying is not true. I mean, look, the Galamse... Oh, so, so listen, 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 listen to me. The right, Galamse, the Galamse is, is worse now than before. We have regional ministers, we have DCs, MPs, police people, uh, customs and uh, forestry commission people scattered all over Ghana. I did not see these things. If you go there, you will get the evidence. Well, those things are there. Mm -hmm. Prof, what I'm asking is, and please, please stick with me here. What I'm asking is, when you mention names like Kojo Ponkroma, what role did he play? When you mention names I like... Mean, I, mean, I didn't say Kojo Ponkroma was engaged in Galamse. He played, he did something, and I wrote about it. What did he do? No, I don't want to go into those things. So in the report. So if the AG decides not to see anything, or doesn't see anything, I cannot say anything. Mm. It's up to him. That's how he interprets information. Is this, an, is this another indication that really the country has lost the fight against Galamse as far as you're concerned? For now, but I don't know what will happen in the future. Maybe a future, the next government or so may have another strategy to solve the problem of Galamse. I hope so. But we also hear that you have compiled some evidence and, and uh, given to Shraj on Galamse. Is that the case? That is the case. Uh, somebody has, somebody, I think an MP, MP for South Dai, reported to Shrag that Shrag should, should go into that report and investigate. So I was called to Shrag as a witness. And I had an initial um, chat with them. And they followed up with a list of things that they wanted to have, which I've given to them. Mm. Yes. Is, is this the same with the AG and the police? Well, they ask for more information, details and other things which the police didn't ask. Okay. See, I'm not a, I'm not a CID person. I'm not a, uh, an investigator. I'll give you what you ask for. Now, if you don't ask me things, uh, it may not be okay to me, but these young people, I think we're very professional. They, mm. they were very specific. They wrote the things down. So right. I went to the checklist. And, and then, provided them the yes. evidence. So comparatively, you think the CID and by extension the AG did a poor job on this? It's not for me to judge, but I mean... What do I, you think? What do I think? If they say that what I've written is CSA, conjecture, personal opinion, and so on, then certainly they did a poor job. I see. I want us to talk about uh, the future president in a bit, uh, but... We'll start off from the bottom of that letter, yes. where you say that, to make matters worse, the NPP establishment mm -hmm. is busy promoting a presidential candidate who, to your mind, mm -hmm. is the most vulnerable and has more baggage than all the aspirants. Are you referring to the vice president? Yes. Why so? Why do you think it's a poor choice for your party? I'm not saying it's a poor choice. I mean, if we're strong, then we leave him. And, com and to compete on a level playing field. But then if party people, government appointees, are more just whipped in line to toe that line, it, it shows that he's weak and he needs, you know, that kind of support. What are some of the baggages that you think he carries with him? Look, a lot of pronouncements that he made in the past, you know, you know, uh, his enemies won't have to pray those things back. And then you see, this is what I'm talking about. Like what? Like um, if the fundamentals are weak, you know, that kind of thing. Those clips, there are so many of them.
And here we are with that. Here we are with that. See, and the thing is, it, it's not his fault that he, he wanted to maybe deceive people. But then, you've made the pronouncements, and now you'll be judged by those pronouncements. This is what I'm saying. Because he's the vice president, has been exposed for eight years, he's bound to have done certain things uh, which will come back to hurt him. This is what I'm saying, that he's more vulnerable than the rest, because the rest mm. didn't have that exposure. Mm. But, but, but when, when you look at the fact that, you know, he seems to come up tops, um, beating all the other candidates in the first uh, stage of the elections, it also looks like a party favorite at this point. You no, still no, think no, he's no, vulnerable? No, is it party favorite or establishment favorite? I don't know. The you explain. Yeah, I mean, yes, he seems to be a favorite of people who seem to matter in the party and so on. But I still say that if you are, because if, for example, the uh, finance minister said, he supported to have said that he will provide all the funds that he needs to win the elections. I think we've heard that before. So if he has the money uh, in the country that is still you know, struggling with uh, certain payments, and if he has the support of uh, the party people and support of uh, government establishment, and then of course you expect him to win the uh, the, uh, the initial one. I see. And so who who are the establishment? I'm not here to define what establishment is. The establishment means those who are, are in charge, whether official or unofficial, you know, of things. The, uh, the president, the chairman of the party. Do they make up the establishment? Not all of them. Every, everybody in, in that bracket, who all the people in, in that bracket who say things and make things happen. So, they, so you think the president is part of the establishment? Why do you want to put the president in there? I, I, I want to know. I'm I don't curious. know. I mean, if we, I don't have to define establishment to people. Establishment is establishment. You can look for it in the dictionary. But, uh, well, <laughs> in, in your case, yes. you have defined establishment to include people who are promoting to establish uh, the vice president, Dr. Muhammad Dubao Amir. So I'm asking you, who are these people who make up the establishments within the uh, NPP? It, it doesn't really matter, but I mean, the, all the um, people who matter you know, in government and the party, including elders and others who think they are important. They are the establishment. If things go the way they are with the vice president, he leads the party into the 2024 elections, what do you think the fortunes of your party could be? Whoever wins the primaries will have a tough. It is possible. Any people can win, but it's not going to be easy. You know, we need to work hard and uh, also be able to answer the many questions that because you see the, the last one was not easy so this one is going to be more difficult mm. and uh, especially when you have uh, a supposedly financial guru and vice president you know for example i mean if we had uh, the president the Fado, is a strong political leader no doubt about that and we had somebody who was supposed to be a strong economic leader the two of them combined did not take us to where we wanted to go. Now, the strong political leader is leaving, mm. leaving the uh, supposedly economic man alone. But, 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 but the NPP sold the vice president to the Ghanaian people as an economic maverick. And so if now you're saying that no, you can't even say that he's an economist. No, no, I'm not saying it's, that. It's not coming out of your mouth. No, no, I'm not saying that. Then the NPP lied to the Ghanaian people no, the about NP, the vice well, president. I don't know. Uh, no, what I'm saying is that we had a strong political leader, a strong economic person together managing things. And things didn't go well. Now the strong political leader is leaving. And only the other one will remain. So it's going to be more difficult. For the Should party. the NPP be given another chance in government at this rate? Um, the NPP, but not in this present configuration. But that's what we are taking into 2024. No, uh, I wish that there would be a chance because, see, look, to be honest with you, I cannot be on the same side as the 
supposedly uh, de facto prime minister. I mean, we can't play, I can't, I can't be on the same team. So in that respect, there must be a change. And, and we are not seeing that change because de facto is still around. Um, the, the establishment candidate who you say, um, you know, is vulnerable and comes with a lot of baggage is still around. Could be going into 2024. So if these people are around, are you leaving? No, I'm not leaving. But you see, ideally, this duopoly, MPP and DC, uh, I have, although I'm a member of the MPP, I would wish that we had a strong third component that will offer strong uh, competition to both MPP and NDC, so that Kenyans will have a choice, a broader choice. Because otherwise, this, this, this party will, will rule and then toss Kenyans over to the next one, and then, you know, we'll be struggling MPP, NDC, MPP, NDC. But, you know, I like the MPP, but not in this present configuration. Mm. But I like Ghana more. I want to see a Ghana that is good, creating jobs, creating wealth, so that young people will have a future in this country. You know, it worries me so much. Talking to my children and some of my the older grandchildren, they are disillusioned, you know. Mm. They said, you, Papa, you know, in fact, my children don't even want to work in any government department. I see. They are not in public service. They are doing their own thing. Could so we want young people to be able to have their future in Ghana. If we talk to young people, 90% of them will want to, to leave the country and only about 10% will want to stay here. Maybe That's it's true. even worse now. So let's create wealth. We have so much resources. Ghanaians are smart. If they are given the chance, they will perform. So, mm -hmm. and we have universities. This is what worries me, Kamini. You know, why do we have all these universities? They are there to research and solve our challenges, our problems for us. So, sometimes I ask myself, why are the universities there and we still have all these problems? Because somehow they are not involved in the solution of the national I problem. See. Let me rein you back into the politics of the NPP. You talked about you wish there could be a third force against the NPP and the NDC. Could Alan be the third force in this 2024 elections? Is he, he quality be, enough? He, he, he could be part of it. I mean, there are several, I, I believe that there are several people uh, outside the two parties who want uh, a, a good Ghana. And also, um, there are people in the MPP who may not be happy with what is happening now. And there are also people in the NDC who are not happy with what is happening now. And if all these people come together and, and create a, a force, I think that it would be good for this country. Could, could, could that be, uh, could those people, one of those people be you? Me? Yes. Well, no, the fact that I am uh, suggesting this means that I wish I could see it, but then I have no ambition to become a president. I want my ambition is to see a Ghana that is good. No, but what, what I'm asking is could one of those people who could be supporting the Alan Dream be you? No, I'm not supporting Alan Dream. You know, Alan, Alan could decide to join or the, I mean, there are several people. I'm not saying that Alan is the number one and people should come and line behind him. No. Um, he, the very people around they can come together and decide at some point who will be the leader. So, so where will your votes go if or when uh, the vice president is, is approved and elected on the ticket of the NPP for the 2024 elections? My vote is secret. Where, not, would your, where would your support be? My support would be for Ghana. I'll look at many things. You know. I mean, I, 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 don't, I take my decisions carefully. Or look at my decision and, and ask myself, do I still want these people, one, two, three, four people, six people, to still remain in power and do what they are doing, continue to do what they are doing? If the answer is no, and I know where they are aligned, then it will, make, it will have influence on how I vote and how I decide. But you have already said that you wish that there could, there could be a third force uh, that will 
uh, win over the NPP and, and the NDC. Mm. And so then it, it questions where your support will be for the NPP in the 2024 elections, doesn't it? It doesn't. Of course, uh, as I said, I cannot decide now because I don't even know. Uh, this is my wish. I don't even know whether such a, a force, I don't want to call it a third force, maybe it will be the number one force. Uh, but a force will come and uh, how is it it's going to be No, but, but, but as a member of the party, if you're already playing with the idea that a third force should take over from both the NPP, your party, and the opposition NDC, it, it's suffice to say that really the love of the party is no longer in your heart. No, and, we, and we no, could no, say no. that at the current state, you no, probably I, have resigned told, in your heart. I've, I've told you that I'm not happy with the present configuration of the NPP. And I'm telling you, it hasn't changed. And Maybe we... it will change. Maybe it will change. I hope so. What makes you think that it could change? I don't know because uh, we don't know. I mean, let's wait and see what happens in the future. We'll see what happens. But while we're on the subject of party, again, I told you we'll talk about your opening letter to future Mr. President. Yes. And um, listen to what you said also at the bottom. Uh, you talked about the political corruption that is gradually eating away Ghana's roots, which you say is disturbing. But then you go on to say, when it comes to choosing leaders to run political parties in the nation, it is no more a question of looking for selfless, competent individuals who have what it takes to move the nation forward, but rather people who are there, and I'm paraphrasing the last bit, people who are there for uh, selfish reasons. When you look at the candidates you have now, is there anybody who has the quality of the kind of leader that you think should lead, uh, the kind of leader that should be in front of the NPP going into the 2024 election and one that should have the potential or chance to lead Ghana as president? Sometimes it's not uh, the question of the leader alone, but the people he will surround himself with and whom he will listen to. Uh, so it would be premature now for me to say this is the case because my idea of a leadership, a leader, um, somebody who is knowledgeable, who is some, somebody who knows what it takes to move Ghana from A to B, who knows that science and technology Innovation are the things that will move us forward. But, Prof, you didn't, you didn't extend the same grace to the, pre, the vice president when you already described him as vulnerable and coming with a lot of baggage. Yes. And, and, and all I'm asking you is to assess the candidates in the running for flag bearership of no, your party. I explained the baggage because he has been around for so long, vice president for almost eight years. He said certain things that did not come to pass. He said certain things that are opposite of what we are seeing now. And so that makes him vulnerable. There are so many things that people can refer to. Uh, and there's this in the so contest. outside of the vice president, these qualities that you hope that the new Ghanaian or future president would have, do you find that amongst the candidates running for flag bearer of the, of the NPP? No, you, you, I, don't, I have not seen one candidate that you know, has all these qualities. It's difficult to get such a person. But one or two qualities, yes, and if he comes and he can gather people around him who will complement everything and then we get a composite body that has all these qualities. Then prof, prof, will... prof, the, these are not too many qualities. Are Selfless, many. competent, who will not come in for selfish reasons. Do you see these three in any of the candidates running for flag bearer of, of the party? You see, there will be uh, elections in a few weeks' time, and I don't want to say anything that will prejudice uh, the process. So let me reserve my question for now, and then at a later stage, I will come back to you and tell you what I... What we I can mean. assume that your inability or difficulty to mention one candidate who may not be coming in for selfish reasons, but for the Ghana agenda... It's a sign that none of these candidates running for flag bearer for I'm, the 2024 I'm, elections I'm on the that. ticket of the NPP. No, I'm not saying that. Uh, certainly, 
I, I don't really know who, how many are coming in for the... The, the, the Vice President, mm -hmm. Kennedy of Japan. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the former Greek minister, Adeni Mo. So there are about four or five of them. Mm. Well, they'll be average. Prof, Prof, are you telling me that you haven't been following events within your own party? Because you are asking me to tell you who the candidates are. Let's start off with the Vice President. No, I don't want to go into personal issues. I mean, I, I, I a... is, is he selfless? Is he competent? Is he aimed for self-power or the Ghana agenda? I will reserve my comments. I, Ghanaians know what is happening. You see, I don't want to say anything, and then tomorrow from Bobati, you know, we'll be in trouble again. Let's jump on to Kennedy of Japan. What do you think? Selfless, see, no, competent, see, all, all, all Ghana have, agenda, or self-power? No, all of them have certain qualities uh, which are good. But then they, so so the, these qualities are good, but not good enough. Which one? These qualities that you see in them. Kamini. Yes. Don't push me too far. I would like to. <laughs> I'd like to. Tell me. Tell me what's on your mind. They no. have some good qualities, but not good qualities enough to take Ghana out of the quagmire we find ourselves in. No, what I'm saying is that some, some I mean, all of them have certain qualities. But then, I am hoping that whoever wins will gather people around themselves who will also okay, bring some let's of this. Make, let's make it easy. Kennedy and Japan, what's the topmost quality you see? Well, I think uh, he's um, straightforward and um, or sensibly will fight against corruption and so on. What are his baggages, do you think? Well, uh, his utterances in the past, just like the vice president. You know, these are things recorded which will come. So, it depends upon how the, I'm sure they also should go back and record, recollect all these things so that they will know how to answer them. Does it make him fit for purpose? Which one? Does it make him fit for purpose? Sometimes you'll be surprised. I mean, whoever thought, look at Ronald Reagan. I mean, people thought he wasn't fit for purpose, but he performed well. Uh, Donald Trump became president, so we never know. These people you mentioned also come with a lot of questions while in office. Uh, and, and so I'm not sure if that is a, it's such a great example you, you make. Maybe not. There. Maybe not. What I'm trying to say is that certainly I don't see any ideal candidate, which is very difficult to get, even under normal circumstances. But I'm hoping that uh, they will come with the strength that they have and then gather people around them who will complement their strength and potentiate each other and, and make it a better place. But Right. Tell, tell me how you think that we could find such a candidate. Or, or even leader for, for, the, for the country. Who, this is what I'm saying. That, you know, there are, I, I may not know them, but there are several people around in Ghana who are good, uh, who can be good leaders. Did, did, did the NPP miss the opportunity when they failed to give you the note uh, to be presidential, uh, to, to, to have the opportunity to be president? Oh, you are going around. I'm not going around. Right. All, <laughs> all I have asked is one time you had also wanted to um, be in the running for president. Yes. So, so I'm asking, did the NPP miss out on the opportunity Oh, no, 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 let's not talk about an MVP. Let me say it for myself mm. that if I were the president, Ghana would have been like a paradise by now. Simple. And I'm not lying. I know the stuff I'm made up of, you know, and I've sacrificed so much, you know, my strength, my money, everything, time, and love for the country. So I'm not saying I don't have any ambition because. As I say, it was for me a big sacrifice being in government. Hmm. Uh, but I want a Ghana that is good. I don't, I'm not, I don't sure I don't say I want a better Ghana. I want a Ghana that is good. Because something may be very bad and we can improve it and make it better, but it will still not be good for purpose. But, but the example of what you could have done that the Ghanaian people would have loved to see would have been your performance in the Environment, uh, tech, Science and Technology Ministry. Yes. Um, but the Ghanaian people don't think that you did much there. Because they don't know. 
So, so uh, tell us. Let me tell you. One, I told the president that I had never seen a country that had developed without the capacity to make machines, build spare parts, create processes. So I presented a program to him, and he accepted it. And that was to build a foundry and machine tool center in Ghana. Machine tooling is a computerized equipment that will enable you to produce spare parts with precision and accuracy. And so, and the foundry is universal. I mean, if you want to produce drainage covers for road construction. Well, to build... You told the president, but were these things done? Started. So we got the land at Atomic Energy. Within six months, we were very far. I imported the first batch of equipment, and I left. And I put it in a standstill. Number two, um, I personally appealed to the, my colleague in Germany, the German Minister for Environment, that I needed to build some facilities that would deal with waste and create energy. So we built a pilot plant at a place called Jankobain, at Chumangwebe, just south. It's a facility that uh, deals with waste. It produces energy from three sources, solar energy, from pyrolysis, that is the burning of plastic things, and then biogas. So there are three sources of energy that are combined to create a composite energy. We create the energy in the process dealing with the waste. So that is working. And it's, this it's working way and in for the Achuma, who? Achuma, just out. Okay. Yeah, working for the uh, community there. Right. Achuma, we just out. Yeah, constituency. Achuma, we just municipal assembly. So that is one thing. The, th the second one was, um, you know, ministries and agencies buy satellite data. I mean, for, for road construction, when they want to construct their roads, agreeing, uh, Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, Lands Commission, they buy satellite imagery. So I worked out a program with Firesat and then uh, installed an Earth observation satellite at Kuntunsi, apart from the, uh, the big one. So well, now, it, 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 it seems you didn't talk much about some of the things that you were doing while you were in office. No, we see that uh, that's the thing. Journalists, about this uh, machine tool center, journalists went there, when, when they were reporting, uh, they said, oh, from what watching, oh, my God, I'm you are working on some better, you know. That's this, this again, this information, I present with you informa information, you have to understand it before you can disseminate it. But if people don't take the effort to absorb the information and then analyze so that they can interpret and present them to the public. Whatever you do may, may not sound... Prof, I, I want to ask you... And there's um, several things, so you go ahead with the next question. Indeed. I want to ask you, um, very respected, renowned surgeon, when it comes to your professional life, fantastic accolades come along with your name. On the political front, however, we cannot say same. Do you have any regrets participating openly in politics? No, I don't have any regrets. Um, don't say that. I don't think what you are, that characterization is right, correct. People know I went into politics with a claim on myself, and I achieved a lot. Although um, they lied on, on me, uh, I've been exonerated, and therefore I'm happy that I went in. If I'm not going in, I would have said, oh, maybe I could have done a lot for my country and I didn't venture. Now I went there, I know how it works. And I'm happy I went there. And I think I did my best for this country. And people will learn from my experience and maybe change the way uh, they approach politics. But, I mean, you tell us that now, but you're also reported to have said that being a cabinet member is not something you'd ever want to do. I didn't say that. Right. I'm not going to say that. What I'm saying is that it was a sacrifice working in government. For me, it was a sacrifice working to get 15,000 cities a month and some fewer coupons, you know. I didn't steal. I rejected bribes. I didn't do anything bad. Just straightforward, working for country. And that ministry, Environment, Science and Technology, you will not get one city for any project. So you have to be very innovative. If you don't have friends abroad, this is what I use my German friends and connections to get some projects for Ghana.
Mm, I see. And so uh, there is no disappointments there? No, I'm not disappointed at all. At all. Prof, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you all for yeah, coming for having me. Professor Kwabna Frimpong Boateng has been my guest on Hot Issues today. He says that if he were president, Ghana will be paradise. A paradise you and I would love to live in. We look forward to that future. But that will be all today on our program. I am Kemini Amano. Bye-bye. Day show is sponsored by Onga. My grandfather said to me, Son, you're a child of this tradition no different from the ancestor of a thousand years who plunged his fingers into the mud. From this mass today you call death, pots were molded. Pots which will keep water of life that sustains your great-grandmothers in youth. Your lips, they unfold with breath, cushioned in language as though a new leaf unravels. Bleu, segbeana pong, na pnfa. Upon navel you were connected to a power that charged your existence. And if you ever run out of energy, the fathers of my fathers left you drums, song, dance, from which your strength should stand, fortified from the battery of those that wish we harm. My son, my son, he sang in a son. You are but a future ancestor. The seed sown before you are now fruits from which you must now plant. <laughs>